Linda, you can unmute when you're ready to start. Just tap. From the community. I don't see any. One on. Uh, Linda, you, Linda, you've been muted this whole time. I just unmuted you. So I, I told you to tap the mic when you were ready. I did. Yeah, and it's did. blue. It's blue now because I just unmuted. It was blue. I'm going to fight with you. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, you're 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 working now. Do we need to go back through this, or we're fine? I mean, I just the first thing we heard you say was uh, comments from the community. Okay. Well, for the record, the minutes have been um, approved by Michael and Richard and the board. No comments from the community. Correspondence, we just have a flyer saying that the select board, um, they do this annually. The Vermont leaves the city in town and has a workshop for select boards. It's um, March, I don't know, 23rd, Lake Mooring. Town will pay if you're interested. And it's nice there, and they feed you well. I've been there. <laughs> okay, we're here for um, Town Garage Air Exchange quote from Lloyd's Home Service. I'm going to let Michael uh, has been working hard on this, so I'm going to let him lead that discussion. Yeah, um, we had been talking with Lloyd's about getting a an air handler and filtration system for the town garage, uh, try and improve indoor air quality. And it looks like the guys are here and ready with a short presentation. Yeah, the, the, my guy around just grab some on the truck to be right back. As soon as he gets back, jump in the uh, Perfect. Him. Awesome. They all sign this. Okay. Yeah, it's just stating that we haven't added or taken away any of our highway mileage this year. That form is necessary to receive our state aid for highways. This year is. So I understand this is one of the, the first kind of commercial size systems you guys have been working on. Yeah, we we've done quite a bit. We do. Part of our business is ventilation, so we do quite a bit of residential ventilation. But in this case, we we reached out to actually the manufacturers and design teams to make sure and size it properly for the application because it being commercial, kind of a specialized application. So I'm Peter Lloyd. I'm actually the owner of the business. Oh. Came out with Will, who's been working with you, Michael, on this project. 
just because I'm technical as well, and I'm a licensed technician. And so I wanted to be able to answer further questions if you guys had any about the systems we're offering you and just be able to yeah. present all the options, give you guys as much information as you would need to make a decision on things. Because we built some different options basically for you. And so we're trying to is, well, oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Don't let him leave with it. <laughs> we'll get him at the door. Not great. We know where they. Are. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Her charger probably is not. Okay. Something didn't charge on the way here. So uh, is here it, it a laptop or is it's it a? a I, I just, it's a Type C, but I just need a USB piece to plug in too. You got it. Thank Go you. I sorry, oh. the technical. <laughs> That's the C one. That's the new one. This is the old. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's okay. Here we go. For all iPhone users, apparently. <laughs> Plug in over there. Or over there. I'll just leave it there. Yeah, my iPad. Could be a little bit first. So there we go. Ready first to explain what we got. It's showtime. Sorry for the delay there. Um, first of all, it's nice to see everybody again. I think it's all same folks. So yeah, how are you? I'm bad. Old. Still. Oh, happy birthday. Congrats. The only thing I think good about 80 is that the childproof number with no sharp edges. <laughs> Other than that, it's stuff. What are you doing at a meeting on your birthday? What's that? What are you doing on a meeting at your birthday? Okay. We Why need to. Here? We can sit there. Oh, no. <laughs> Nobody smothered me. I made it through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Good gifts, vodka and cold wood, and vodka and cold wood. The strong stuff. <laughs> That's a good time. So yeah, I know. Um, I know Peter was talking with you folks for a few minutes. Um, I asked him to come out tonight just because of it being what we're what we're looking for. I want him for to be able to extra extra ask and answer extra questions on the tech side of things that you guys may be looking for, um, just for extra reassurance for everybody to make sure that we pinpoint exactly what the goal is. Okay. Um, before I dive into the options that are charging, um, I do, even though I did this after the flood um, for the furnaces, I do wanna recap on a couple of guarantees that are gonna be applied for these systems as well. Of course, it's not going to be heating. So, you know, there's a couple that aren't necessarily going to apply. But again, first and foremost is still going to be uh, your 100% money back guarantee for two years. So, if you guys call us up and say the system's not doing what you anticipated it to be doing, um, we're going to come out, we're going to assess the situation, go through the whole system, do whatever we need to. And the result is you guys will get your money back for that. We want you satisfied with our work and with our company. Um, I know our guys tried to do their absolute best for the last, last time working with everybody. And uh, we want to do the same for, for this project out here for you too, and make sure you know that we're there. Um, Linda, you still have my number and Mike does too. So if you guys have questions throughout, I just let folks know, and everybody in here is welcome to have it. I let folks know, you know, you have that direct communication with me. Pull that through. Um, our, let's see, property protection. Um, you know, it's a garage we're working in, but with that being said, it's not our property. We still want to, want you to know we're gonna, we're going to respect it. I know it's a workplace, and guys go in and out all day long, but um, we still want to treat it as if it was our own our own place. Um, you know, there'll be no uh, smoking or tobacco use still on public property over there as well. 
Um, our apple to apple guarantee, whether it's heating, and I know I mentioned this with the with the furnaces, but uh, whether it's heating or whether it's air exchange systems or anything like that, we still always state that a lot of folks can kind of wing it, if you will, and they may be able to do it for cheaper. They can cut corners and it's not going to do what you guys are looking for. If it does, it's not going to work like you're wanting it to. So again, if somebody were to offer that for a cheaper price, the same quality products that we use and these guarantees and warranties that we that we have for you, um, we would match them and go through that with you guys. Um, after talking with uh, a couple different companies, so I met with Mike, kind of pinpointed, tried to pinpoint with Mike what we were looking for, and that was you know, air quality is a big one. And then also, um, especially during the winter time, there's a lot of moisture in there, a lot of moisture from, at least from what I saw and from what Mike was telling me, I forget who it was, Mike, but there was a gentleman in there too, that was one of the truck drivers. And, um, I talked with him a little bit with you too. And he said, it's, it gets bad at times. Oh, wait. Um, yes. And, uh, just, just humid as well. Like just kind of gross. If you just that air, that stagnant air. So, I started by calling a company for um, an air, a true air exchange system. Gave them all the measurements of the space, let them know what the application was being used for, the space, what the space is being used for, to try to get their best feedback in order to build you guys the best system and see the recommendations. After talking with him, he actually suggested for me to call another company um, that would be a slightly different application, if you will, and I'll go through that with you in just a moment, rather than doing um, a true air exchange system, it would be a commercialized dehumidification system that's also going to be filtering as the air is coming through. Um, and it's going <clears> to, <throat> as far as humidity goes, it's going to make a humongous difference on get water out as well as air quality because you're getting all that nasty stuff out of the air. Um, let me check over here. Mike, was there anything else I just want to ask you? I mean, air quality, moisture. Was there anything else we were? No, those those were the two the two big things. things. Right. Now, okay. Taking the moisture out of the air could potentially help preserve some of the trucks, and you know, air exactly. quality is always great for the guys. Yep. And I know that it's been, been a little bit, so I just like to double check you. Say one thing, I'm doing another. Let's work here next to you, sir. And then um, while this is loading, the other part to remember is all of our guys, our whole team, everybody's drug tested. We're all background checked. Um, our company's fully insured. Again, our guys are insured. We're licensed to be here doing what we're doing. Um, you know, with all of these systems, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of, straightforward stuff and a lot of in-between stuff. So we want to make sure that everybody is supposed to be doing what we're doing for you guys for safety and for the best quality of your system. Up here. Does anybody have any questions for me regarding the, the guarantees that I went through before we started then? Peter, did you want to chime in on anything? Great. Let's go. Let's just get on solution. Um, Dolan's doing this. So, is, is there somebody else that's going to join Linda? So, we can't see lotion. Oh, that's all right. Don't worry about it. Forget it. I was just curious. Linda, I'll ask you while this is loading. Um, the girl's been staying warm. Yes, thank you very much. Good, good. They do dance classes at the building that we... Yeah. 
they were getting a little chilly without the yeah uh, i can imagine the heat so getting a lot of phone calls <laughs> it was very chilly before the system got put in so are you there peter were you there? i actually wasn't on that one oh. I, I dealt with a lot of design and worked on the back end of it i meant to go look at it because i heard about it i was talking to the technicians and everything but it's I mean, the guys all take pictures, so I was able to review the whole everything, see a lot of the work done, everything. So it looked good. It's nice and it's quiet. It's a very old system. I heard yeah. that they're really good, good quality stuff. Those were nice The um, the setup that we did there for tying everything in, um, for what it's worth, you guys are the poster child for the manufacturer on that system. So it just, yeah, the company, the manufacturer is very happy. So you're famous for what it's worth. We'll take the royalty check in the mail. Yes. <laughs> All right. future advertising. Send it to you for, for uh, <laughs> send it to you on April Fool's Day, Mike. So, <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to start with, um, I'm going to do it like we did with the furnace estimates. I'm going to start at the absolute, just the top, the, kind of the, probably the absolute best solution, and then go down and explain the ins and outs. If Peter has additional information. I am going to, ask him if he wants to put anything in there just to help more with knowledge. Um, but first and foremost, when I spoke with the reps for this company, um, we need to do, because it's such a long building, it's like a 60 by, I don't whatever, it's 4,000 square feet for that space in there. We want to have two units basically so these would these would hang up on the ceiling this particular estimate i know this is really i don't know how to do how did we do this last time i want to make sure people can see here i don't know how to uh this is sent to them after or something okay let me talk through it and then i'll email it to everybody if that works yeah, so you guys can pull it up directly um so it'd be two dehumidification systems so i gave pictures on the layout of the building to the rep. And so if you picture when you walk in the door, uh, like the side door where we where we walked in right there, mm -hmm. bucket loaders on the right, if you go straight back to that wall that joins the fire department. We'd have what we were envisioning was having a unit up on the ceiling there. And then on the other corner, actually, so go down that wall before the garage, have another one there. Along with this option, what we would do is take a uh, supply duct. So picture on your furnace system, you need that air to be pushed, pushed through. So what this would be doing is sending air all the way across the garage. And this dehumidifier is gonna have a return built into it. So it's circulating the air. And while it's doing that, it has a high MERV rating filter in there. So it's gonna be grabbing, oh, did we lose somebody? Okay, it's gonna have a uh, high MERV rating filter for capturing particles that we don't wanna be breathing in there. And then these units are actually, it sounds crazy, but each unit can pull up to 25 gallons of water out of the air a day. What we do is there's a special thermostat that we would put in. They're gonna tie into the systems. We'll set it. It's kind of a set it and forget it. That way it doesn't get messed with and it can, we dial it in. We want to try to get it to be about 50% humidity, like you would at your home, basically. It's going to keep enough moisture in there so you guys aren't getting bloody noses while they're working in there. Um, but it's going to pull a lot of that out. These have condensate. So we would have to take from each unit. I don't, I know Mike, you and I talked about it. I don't recall you saying that there was a floor drain in there. No, I don't believe there is. So you know where the bathroom is? There is a floor drain for that they have pumped out um, for. Yeah, it's got an oil separator yeah. and things in it. I, yeah. I thought that they had abandoned that, but I don't know why. I don't think they said it pumped out. Okay. Okay. So, so there is a there is a floor drain. I don't know if you'd need a neutralizer for your condensate or not, but we'll we'll take care of all that on, on our end. Um, if we need to, what we would do is we would tie into existing plumbing for drainage. If that's accessible, that's great too. But our guys will I'll let them know, I'll make a note, and then uh, our guys can look at what the best application is going to be with you. So is there a lot of water with this that's coming out of the air? 
25 gallons a day per unit. We're putting two units in. Yeah. So there's a, I let them know. So one thing. Is, study stream. Well, 25 there's... gallons a day or 50. 50. 25 per. Up to that much. It's based on the moisture level in the room, right? So you're running actually a, your control is based off humidity. It's humidity temperature sensor controlling when those come on and off. So they run down 50% moisture and then they shut off. If it's maintained, they're designed and spec to maintain that that percentage of being in space in this application, and so that it's not keeping all that moisture high level in there, basically. And is this year round or just? Um, Great question. You know it's it's application based, so like it kind of depends how the garage gets used. So that's why I had further questions because you are conditioning this the air in the space. So come summertime. If you leave garage doors open and right. everything's wide open, I wouldn't suggest not using this control in those times of the year because you're trying to humidify the outdoors at that point and it'll never shut off correctly. Right. Right? So, so it all depends on your use of the building, but knowing how garages kind of get used, your main concern, if I understand it correctly, is in the wintertime, you have wet trucks pulling in, they're melting off, you're getting the corrosion, you're getting all the humidity trapped inside the building, if you will. So that's when it's going to do the bulk of its work. If you kept things closed up, you know, in the summertime and other parts of the year, it'll still do, still maintain the humidity level. But I would recommend turning them off when you're opening garage doors, leaving things open all day. Because as you know, humidity increases in the summertime. And then you're getting all this, you're trying to, all the cot air is very humid coming in the building from outdoors. And it'll be counterproductive and it's not designed to dehumidify the outdoors, obviously, right? So it won't keep up and run continuous and it costs electricity to operate these machines, so you're going to spend up more electricity to do that. So the idea is you can pretty much run it year round if you, when the building's closed up, when it's opened and up, I would turn them off. Would be the suggestion, and you can do that in the control. Is there any way to run them so that we get the the MERV? You know, if you do, I don't remember what you just said. The filter the MERV, MERV thirteen. Um, could we get the air filtration without the dehumidification? Um, with a ducted system. Um, there is ways to add like a fil another filter housing in there and maybe create something. I'd have to double check with the manufacturer to see. They're really designed to run as a package all together and do the process. Mm -hmm. um, they're not really, we're not like we're putting in just like a fan. One of our options we're going to get into is just like an exhaust fan style that so we have an alternative solution for mm -hmm. summertime where maybe you're just moving some fresh air through the building as opposed to using this. Um, so those are some lower options we have built. They're not as comprehensive and as thorough as they're just more of like pass through fresh air being brought in and less control over the humidity level in the rooms. So those that exhaust fan option might be a better solution during those times in the summer when your place is wide open, just to keep fresh air moving through the building as opposed to trying to make it super limited humidity, limited moisture in those spaces when the doors are open. Yep. That's usually a better solution. Um, but there is an option we could look into for maybe moving some filtration through there. I just have, that's not something we have on the codes right now currently. This drain into the septic system. It'd be septic or into it's just going to be more what's pulling. It's pulling the corrosive, moisture laden humidity out of the air. So it isn't. It's sort of corrosive, I guess, in the sense that it's salt mixed with the air, but. Um, we would check out the systems you have and either put it in the septic system or into the floor drain system. And if a neutralizer, you usually don't need neutralizer for that unless you are dealing with, like we're not pulling off like a corrosive material, it's just humidity being removed from the system. So generally no neutralizer required, it would go into the plumbing system or into your drain. What you don't want to do is dump it into an open drain where it's just putting the moisture back in the room after you dehumidify the space. So it has to go into a sealed sealed pipes attached to the system somehow, because we no point in pulling the moisture out of the room and dumping it back to the floor drain, having it be in there still. And so it's and with that, it's logistics of how we do it. The price includes piping it to either source, whatever makes the most sense for the application. Um, but most likely, it would usually go into the plumbing system because it'd be a sealed drain that would just take it away and be gone. It's the system no longer be in the air to keep the humidity level to maintain the lower lower temperature or lower percentage of. Humidity in the in the space, basically. Does that make sense? So along with um, the dehumidification systems and the ducting, you got to have some way to power them. So it's nothing too substantial. The manufacturers across the board for any of any of these types of systems, you would think they'd give you like 
a really long chord and you're smiling at me because you already know what I'm going to say. It's a very short chord. So there is, of course, electrical going along that wall. I got good pictures of it. Our guys would tie into that and then we'd take, um, you know, conduit, we'd go up and then do two, two new outlets for each system. Um, because of it being a commercial space, we have on here doing a uh, permit for electrical, as well as anytime we deal with condensate, we just want to it's more not only covering ourselves, but making sure that you guys have proof that we pull permit for plumbing too, because any, anything with condensation, we just want to be on top of it for you guys. So that I put that both on here, it's permit for electrical and plumbing. Um, if you recall for the furnaces, we, I went over our parts and labor warranty and that was a three years parts and labor. For these, um, we actually were able to uh, work with the manufacturer. The manufacturer's warranty on this is gonna be six years. We took our parts labor warranty that was three years and we increased it to five years for you guys on this system. So anything during that five year period, it's covered parts labor, you name it. So these are commercial dehumidification units spec for the application. We're not like putting like a residential dehumidifier in there and trying to make it work. We got actual two commercially sized units that are gonna do the job, do the hard work and everything for you. So the design was important in this situation. So it took some design work to make sure that it's the right application, the right unit for everything. So. And we got it. The, there was a lot of foam tag with our reps because there are ones up in Canada and ones down in Georgia. So trying to tie in the full circle took a little bit. But <laughs> um, And then there's, I'll go through the last line item after I go through everything. Um, but right now, so that's the top one. That's going to be all the duct in. And just to put that in perspective, it's 130 feet of duct that we're running because of going all the way across for both sides. All the electrical, um, condensate, name it, you name it, you got it. That comes out to 46298. That's the top one. Now, in talking with the representative for this company, I asked them, you know, obviously it's going to run 110% great being able to get the air all the way over so it comes all the way back through. What I asked him was, are, is there any way we can use these systems if they don't want ductwork to be able to run these without running ductwork all the way across? And he said, absolutely. So these are strong enough to where they're still going to be able to circulate the air. It's not going to be probably quite as effective as trying to get it all the way over to the other end of the building. But he said, he sees it time and time again. He tells folks and works with folks all the time that does this. They basically put one on one end of, of the building. If we were to do this, I'd probably honestly talk with Peter and our other head installer, uh, Peter, who was doing the furnaces about maybe um, either keeping up the same application or putting another one on the other side. That way they're both kind of pointed towards each other just to help if we're not having that, that duct for the extra airflow. Same thing, um, got to have electrical for this. Um, permits are going to be there. Um, and then we did our five years parts and labor warranty on that as well. So, and everything is uh, all labor included with us too. Nothing's gonna change on you guys. For this one with no duct work, um, so taking that 130 feet of duct work off, that goes down to 36, 238. Questions for me guys? I don't wanna go through too quick and I don't wanna bore you either. So <laughs> what do you think it might? Just a uh, note I had made earlier about noise levels and now talking about the ductwork, just wanting to know the sizing and location to make sure it doesn't interfere with, you know, the guys work with the dump bodies up. Okay. Make sure that none of the equipment's going to hit any of that. Yeah, so you got... So yeah, like I can answer, I think it's eight inch, I believe. Um, we use like spiral duct, which is the duct, it's thicker ductwork than the spiral that you see it exposed in commercial applications. So we would keep it up tight for corners. So like looking at the building, We'd have to kind of kind of run it either down the front of the building, above the garage doors, way up at the top of the tight corner, or in the back of the building. So we try to make sure it wasn't missed with your headroom at all. 
Um, and so the idea of that is keeping it as tight and hanging. It'll have to hang below the ceiling that's already in those spaces. But as far as the exterior walls, as high as possible with our hangers that we use so that it wouldn't interfere with that application. So you're kind of keeping the two units uh, there. And then but the ductwork, it just it makes a more effective path of moving the air through. Without ductwork, they'll still work the same. It just might move through a little, or, you know, it's pathways of least resistance going through there. So it just moves through at a slower pace or kind of may miss a certain area or whatever it's doing. It's kind of do its, but if you let them set them up right, we're still going to get good air, good movement through those units. They're powered by a big fan that draws the air in one side and blows out the other side and moves the air through. So based on the plates that we're going to use for the manufacturer, it'll still do a pretty decent job and removing the moisture for you because it's still going to be controlled by the unit and they'll run until the mid level comes down to percent and do a job for you. It'd be less noise pollution to have the duct work in place and flow. They are be more efficient airflow. But... It's more efficient airflow for sure because it's it kind of does a better job of circulating floor to ceiling, the whole room exchanging there a little bit more efficiently. It probably would be slightly quieter with because your your fan noise would be more with having the duct work attached. Duct work does kind of muffle the air down a little bit. Again, it's kind of like a fan running, probably no different than a fan running in the space or two fans running when they're running. So they do kind of have also, there's a refrigerant component in there that's taking the moisture out of the air. It's, it's taking the air and conditioning it and come going through that filter. So it almost sounds a little bit like a refrigerator running um, with a little bit of fan or something similar to like an AC unit outside running a little bit. That's kind of the noise it'll make. So it's not extremely loud, but it does have some noise to it when it runs. So and you'll have two of those units, obviously, running instead of one. Questions, guys? So that was the two options for for um, those systems as far as being like the best solution for getting all the moisture out of the air. And the other thing um, before I go on that the rep told me was the amount of, uh, you know, Peter was explaining we'd try to dial it down to that 50% humidity level. He said over time, I don't know how, obviously there was water from July everywhere. Have you guys had any like serious mold mildew over there? No, we've had a um, mold specialist come. You have okay. And uh, we immediately yeah, that's that. good. There was there was two determinations that there wasn't any mold in the building, as I recall. Okay, that's good. Right. I just want a little bit on the fire station side, but it's been removed and yeah. and repaired. Perfect. Yeah, which is kind of like caused by high moisture being trapped in an inside the building, you know, sort of. So everything's been cut out cool. and taken out and yes. re insulated. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to verify because what he said was, you know, over, it's probably sounds obvious, but it's just going to help keep that with, with the, everything that's going on. So um, this next option is so we're kind of. Uh, passing by the uh, dehumidification system. This would be kind of the initial air exchange system that we had started talking about, Mike, um, via HRV system or a heat recovery ventilator, if you will. So totally different rep manufacturer company that I worked with on this. We did the same thing. I gave them the size, the application, what we're looking for. Um, the other thing that everybody across the board we had to take into consideration was um, there's not just garage doors. They're great big garage doors. And I know Peter talked about having the doors open during the summer, but especially with this, um, what's going to happen is you have that fresh air come in from outside. It's going to pass over um, kind of a coil on inside the unit and it's going to warm that up. So if it's cold outside, it's not going to be blowing 10 degree air into your system. And then it's going to, cycle it through and then put out the stale air outside and then keep doing that. It's going to help some with dehumidification. It's not going to do anywhere near what the other systems are going to do as far as getting moisture out of the air. It's just, he said, basically because of it being such a big space, and this is a commercial unit too, um, it was the biggest that they actually had. Um, he said that it's eventually it's almost going to be like if you're just recycling that air, um, 
you're going to get a little bit of fresh air in. It's going to get some of it out, but it's not going to be the like total solution to the problem, if you will. So with this unit, like there's two styles of air exchange ventilating systems out there. There's HRVs and ERVs. And so this is an HRV, heat recovery ventilator. So the purpose of this is to bring in air from outdoors through a core. And what the core does is it send, it's sending heated air, the stale heated air from inside the building out through the core while it's bringing in outdoor air through the core. And it's reclaiming the heat off, that, off of that air. So instead of bringing in negative 20 degree air in the wintertime, you could cross the two through a core and it, it absorbs the heat that's going out. So it's 60% gain. So the example would be you're bringing in like zero degree air in the middle of winter and your, your air is leaving at 60 degrees. It's going to absorb 60% of that. So it's going to bring in 50 degree air instead of zero degree air. And it'll take the heat off and then send the cold air back out through the core. And so that's the purpose of it. But the other purpose of it is it does have a drain on it. It does remove some moisture for you folks. But it's not like the dehumidifiers where it's going to maintain that moisture percentage. It's a fresh air ventilation system. So in the wintertime, as we know, the air is really dry outdoors. And the dry air is what helps to dehumidify the space. So when you have a space that's moisture laden, like your garages and everything's sealed up in the winter, you continue to bring in that dry air to dry the space. And it removes moisture content as the air is leaving the space in this unit, basically. Um, but unlike the dehumidifiers, it's going to take some away some moisture. It's going to bring in fresh air. It's more of a ventilation air exchange. And same kind of a concept in the summertime. Not a great application because if you're bringing in super moist air from outdoors. You're just going to bring in more moisture in the summertime. The doors are open or whatever. It's great for when things are keep some moisture down, level down the top. Um, Vermont weather is hard this way because like they're not the greatest They'll still do some moisture removal and stuff when they're running in the summertime, but again, it's 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 bringing in fresh air, exhaust, and stale air out of the building. So this unit's controlled more based on a percentage timer, meaning you're going to say, "I want this thing to run." The way that the ventilation rules are set up is a third of an air exchange per hour of operation. So it means if you have a 60 minute hour, you set this thing to run 20 minutes on the hour and run. And you can control these with a humidistat that controls humidity to a certain extent, but it's not going to gain you down to that low of 50% humidity level and maintain that because it's designed more to just exchange air and give you fresh air and reduce the moisture in the room, but not remove it as much as the other units will do basically for you, if that makes sense. Yes. So that's what this system is. Um, there also is, like the other thing I failed to mention, the dehumidifiers have a fresh air option in too. So we would, we would probably do that. We'd be bringing fresh air into those dehumidifier options we were talking about just to help with bringing, bringing in fresh air while dehumidifying. So that's right. a true commercial dehumidifier. This is, a, this is a ventilation air exchanger that's designed to bring in fresh air, remove stale air, and remove some level of moisture, but not down the level you're, that we're talking about with our units. They're two different units completely. So I just wanted to clear that up for you folks. And so this is a viable solution. It's just not going to be maybe as low of a moisture removal tool as the other one is. That makes sense. But it is it does remove some moisture and does bring in fresh air and exchange it. And this requires duct work as well, which you we haven't quite gone into, but it requires a little more duct work. We duct it all the same way because it, it needs to exchange all the air. It needs to be piped so it this is one unit or two, Will? This, this is one unit. One big commercial yeah. unit. So we a little more ducting, maybe a little bit. Uh, originally, when I spoke with the reps, and this is where, you know, dependent, um, either Peter or Peter would probably, like if you said, yeah, you know, we like this system, probably try to get him out here. Like just contact Mike or Linda just to take a to layout design for it. For, for this, it. because what the reps just had really recommended would be um, three supplies and three returns on this for the system. So three three runs of supply ducts and then having the return to be able to come back through just to make sure that it works to its absolute best capability for you guys. Um, so same for this one, you know, there's kind of the same electrical piece of it. The cord on these are even shorter than the cord on the <laughs> dehumidifiers. And uh, and then there's condensate. So we have the permit for the electrical and plumbing. We do have 
for this particular unit, rather than the five, um, this one is a three years parts and labor warranty on this. And again, that's everything for those first three years after install. Or, uh, all the guarantees still apply to that though. Um, and the total for that labor, everything is 26,758. Yes, sir. Uh, it was 46298. And then the last option, Peter and I were actually, um, we've been going back and forth about what would be one more solution for you guys to at least help you hit some of, some of the goal. And Mike, if you recall, we had talked about a larger sidewall fan. So what? sidewall fan, like exhaust fan, basically to help get some fresh air movement through and to try to get it. I put this in and you'll, you'll be able to see this. I put it directly in the line item, but there's just a couple stipulations with this one. So this would be for summer only. It cannot be used with the existing gas fired modine um, being run. It's uh, Peter, you were talking about that a little bit earlier with the with how the modine fires and then it's going to go back drafts. Exactly. So what happens is you currently have an exhaust fan in your space. Uh, it's undersized. It's not sized properly. So we size a properly sized exhaust fan for that square footage of building. And this is exhaust only. So you just got done telling you about a heat exchanger that actually brings in fresh air and exhaust fresh air out. This is just replacing the your too small exhaust fan with a properly sized one. And so it'd be a summer solution, which you could add on to the other options if you wanted to. Because we're talking about a lot of these applications are designed for the buildings closed up tight in the wintertime. And then summer when things are open, just a matter of moving air through there and removing some moisture maybe, or just having some air flow through that building. But this is not a solution in terms of like, we want to be clear with you folks that it's, when you have a modine, that's not a direct vent appliance you have combustion air required when the unit fires up and heats your building. So if you have a big exhaust fan pulling out, they say it was closed up and you're using it in the winter time, the concern is you actually pull the exhaust combustion fumes back into the building and down and out or pull the flames out of the unit. And you have this huge high CFM fan competing with your, your combustion air needed for your unit. And so those two are not really well compatible for closed up buildings in the winter time because with your modine, direct vent means you have you bring in fresh air piped in directly to your, your gas combustion source and you exhaust your air back out. What you have over there, from what I can from what I looked at the pictures, understand is it's just exhaust only model and it's open to the it's open to the atmosphere. So it uses the same air in the space for combustion air. To, so it takes air to make the fire. So it's open to the atmosphere. So if you take a fan and start sucking that out, it's gonna pull combustion gases back down the chimney in the building. And so that's not a good situation. And so that's a summer, that's where like the fan you have now probably works primarily in the summer and doesn't, you don't want you don't want to suck. And then there's no air exchange or no heat reclaiming with a heat recovery ventilator system. So you're just making heat and sucking the heat outside, blowing it outside, wasting all the energy you just made at a high dollar value because you're you're that's the way it's designed to do. It's not doing any kind of conditioning of the air, it's just pulling really cold air somewhere through cracks, crevices, garage doors. So it's not a viable solution for, it's a cheaper solution, but there's really no, there's really, there's a problem with that. And there's really no guarantees as a performance wise. It's, it's just going to bring in some air to the building. And you could always cut in like a hole there in the building and try to pull air through. But ideally it's, it's more of a summer application just to, just to try to move air through and keep stale, stale air from hanging out in there and trap, being trapped in there and creating high moisture situations when the summer when the doors are open, that kind of thing. So that's that, that kind of explains it. If you have questions further, let me know. But kind of get the picture with that. That's like the cheapest, bare bones. Sounds uh, like something I'm trying to get by with at home. Exactly. <laughs> I, I have an engineer, engineer design that's 20 years old. They did that with a piece of water plant. <sighs> And it's like the it's like the bottom bottom of the barrel kind of a solution that the one you have isn't size right. This is the right size fan for flow, but it's really 
just more designed to move airflow through the building when heat's not running because you will have combustion issues and backdrafts and you, know, you could have whole carbon oxide down in your Do building. They know that? What's that? I'm not sure with the existing fan if they do know that. Yeah. Like, we'll let them, them know that. <laughs> yeah. As soon as the presentation's over and we're moving to the next thing, I'm going to send Dylan a message. Just because, like, if you run that, I mean, if you have enough drafty holes in the building it can pull through, there's a chance it won't affect your combustion. But overall, it usually does. And whether you're aware of it or not, that's, that's a concern for us, you know, just because. The heaters know. I mean. Yeah. And there's not, so far as I could tell, I didn't bend to the site, but there was no. There was two pipes off. I just saw the one exhaust pipe on the chimney, and that's it. And I have the same model in my garage. I know you're back what that is. I'm assuming it was this easy one for it barns was, to put in. It was the cheapest, most quickest, you know, slammer in, not not the high pitch zoom on like that. With the, if you freshly piped in fresh air to it, maybe you'd get away with, but it should be like a sealed combustion brings in fresh air unit if possible there. So we'll go ahead and give them the pricing on that. Yeah. That's just a one year yeah. warranty type solution. Um, the only other note that I made on here is there is existing electrical there for the one that's there. What I did, we just made a note saying that, um, you know, we're accommodating for the existing wiring there. And then I just put on the standard electrical pass that has been on the other ones. And then the electrical permit, if we need to, you know, if our guy said, okay, we're going to have to upsize something, then we would call Mike or Linda or whomever and just communicate that. But I mean, I think based off of what we were looking at, things should be pretty pretty good there. Um, this is a one-year parts and labor on this one. The total on that one is 13,293. Does the hole in the side of the building get bigger? And it does get a little bigger. We have 24 by 24. I believe it's went from 24. So we have to put it get a grill. It looks like a grill to. And the 13 has you guys taking care of that as well. Yeah. Mounting the fan, cutting a bigger hole, wiring it up, doing like hold the whole line for you. It's just exhaust fan only situations at size, probably for the building size. Yeah. The square footage you have. Yeah. The uh, the gentleman. Whoops. Go ahead, sir. No, I'm sorry. No, you're go okay. Ahead. You go. <laughs> uh, our biggest concern then is moisture and foul air. So this all started when. Uh, shortly after the flood, we had some air quality questions, um, you know, because the floor was all silted in and uh, moisture was a concern at that point, but it really was about indoor air quality. Um, and it seems like the way to achieve that is with your, your filtration and some moisture control. Um, but that's how it all started was, was air quality concerns. Well, I just, you know, Trying to figure his priorities, but no, I, I don't know nothing. <laughs> so, do you, um, so, how long do these units usually last? So, for the, I know on the hum dehumidification system, the manufacturer's warranty is six years. Um, we still recommend that. I mean, it'd be like anything. I would. I don't think it'd be a bad idea for our guys to come out on that. To, if annual service, like you do change filters, we includes like a one year supply of filters. Garage is pretty dirty. So sometimes you have to change them more often in like three months because it all depends on the, how dirty the space gets. But just going through it once a year and maintaining it. I think average lifespan on, on the dehumidifiers and the HRVs are anywhere from like 10 to 15 years lifespan. Obviously, there's no magic ball. And that gives me an idea. When it comes to like, corrosive salt laden garages there's a chance it could shorten the life of it obviously because your air quality is a little bit less than ab than normal but these are commercial units we asked them about that specifically we said hey they're driving you know wet trucks in full of covered in snow melting them off with salt in the back of them is the warranty still good they're warranting it for six years still with all of the applications being applied so there's always a chance it could fail in six years but i've seen them last between 10 15 years on average was commercial fun. applications as well as residential. So sometimes longer. It just depends. If, if it gets really maintenance, sometimes you're cleaning out the blower, you're servicing, you're cleaning the, the corrosive materials off it yearly. It kind of extends life a bit longer, makes flats longer for you, you guys. Can we move it if we build a new garage? Yep. Especially if you don't if you're like not doing duct work and everything, it'd be a lot easier. Just we're just gonna have them supported and hung. You just unbolt them and they plug in and out with the new building, you know. So we could spec out a spot in the new building for the units to hang. 
Yep. Should that be the thing? Correct. We could at that time. We could even. I'd be happy to myself or yeah, I mean, one of the other guys that come out and look bring at the this all in else. I mean, obviously, as long as thus all things considered, the same space, or we may have to add one if it's the larger building or whatever the deal is. But we try to get with like one unit, but they don't make dehumidifiers big enough to serve as that large. They just put in two to cover everything. So based on like cubic footage and of the space. In the application, and the, the gentleman that uh, just to make you guys chuckle, the gentleman that helped me with those as far as the dehumidifiers go, the one from down south in Georgia, he's like, so you know what? What are they doing for the garage? And I said, well, it's all the the work, the town trucks, the salt trucks, the plow trucks, and everything. And he's like, he's like, well, I'm really sorry. My condolences to all y'all up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, us too. Like, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's 70 degrees down here right now. So <laughs> um, the other thing I didn't mention, maybe, well, you know what? I'm going to wait. I'll wait just a minute. It's good news. It's not bad. So any other questions you guys think of? Or you're pretty, pretty clear cut in the options, basically. I have Linda's email, of course. It's still lynda.wolta.selectboard at email. Is there anybody else's that you'd like me to add on to this? Mike, do you want this? Or? Do you have my thoughts? It's not a, it didn't get put in on this job page for whatever reason. Do you mind just giving it to me again really quick? Yeah, um, I'll just, I have yours. I'll just send yours. Oh, perfect. Really certain. And um, the other thing I'll do as soon as we're out of this meeting is um, the rest of our contact info is all on the Newtown site, I believe. So I'll give you a link to that. You can add the rest of the board onto the perfect. Yeah, I can I can certainly do that. That way I know everything over to you guys. Yeah, send it to everyone. Yeah. So you're going to email us this presentation to review? Yes, I am. Yep. Thank you. I'm just going to go ahead. Linda's just right there. Linda just went to you, just so you have that, and then I'll get everybody else's put in too. Okay. Um, so what I was going to mention was right now, this time of year, last time we saw you guys, things were crazy, right, with the schedule. Um, it's always kind of that in-between from the new year to the beginning of spring where we're open. We can get stuff done for you guys sooner than later we're not going to have to call you and tell you that we're yeah. three months out and um, linda smiling because we had to play that with the because of the flood um but what we did we try to help out as much as we can during during these times it help, it gets stuff done for you guys sooner it gets our guys out in the field and being able to stay busy and so um i just put a hvac spring special discount on each line item so it just says that and i know you guys have to talk you guys are gonna have to go through everything but it just says if you're able to fill our next available slot on the schedule, meaning we're we're open, guys. So um, we're going to give you a discount of uh, one thousand nine hundred ninety off the top of any of these as well, and that's put on every estimate on the bottom of the line item. Basically, you put it on there as like a spring special. If you guys are able to decide, then you want to do it soon later. We can keep. We can give you that special for the mm -hmm. spring. And then once our schedule is full, that may be like put it on there. All the prices we gave you don't include that discount. So you would take a discount off those prices we gave you. Yeah. That's a way to uh, help you and help us and just say, hey, let's do it while we have time. We're not backed up for three months. If we wait till spring, we're usually back to busy and it's months before we get out there and do the work again. So if you guys decide to do something that helps you, it helps us. And, and what I would do too, if you guys say, you know, we're going with X, then, um, on my end, I would just go ahead. I would apply that so it's on there. So it's subtracted before you guys sign the estimate. That way you're not signing it without that on there. Just so you know that. I'll make sure we do that properly for you. Um, Mike, did you send me something? Yeah, I sent you my email address and then the link to our select board page so that you can get to Did the you list. text that to me or email it to me? I hope. Be sure. I don't know if there is a random stranger that now has... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> publicly available information. So. Few minutes. I guess they were 
Are you on Verizon or AT and T? AT and T. Oh, see, I got full. Yeah, I have. I got. And you might have just let somebody know everyone's. That's okay. Sometimes my phone takes a minute too. Well, we'll connect one way or the other. I'll make sure that you get that. That's fine. Thanks. Other questions you guys yeah. know, or is that pretty clear? Well, I think I'm I'm certainly satisfied. Yeah. With all the bullet points. The options are clear to you guys as far as what everything is. Basically, your top two options are de commercial dehumidification units. Your middle option is a, a HRV heat, uh, air exchange fresh air system with a core, and then the last option is exhaust on the fan. Right. And if you end up wanting to go with that, I mean, you could always. You can always add the exhaust fan on any of those other options if you wanted to try to balance the summer, winter, change over thing. Or you could just you can have for now because the fabric exhaust fan works to a certain degree, maybe. I don't know how it works or doesn't work, but probably not great, but it's it's just a way to move air through the building when the doors are open and they're washing rigs and everything. It's kind of happening in the summertime. You know, because you're conditioning the space with the top three options. So to open your doors is like, Conditioning the outdoors is not, it's not going to do that job. It's going to run continuously with those applications, if that makes sense. For normal like use of like opening the doors, pulling trucks in, closing them, that's all factored into these top three options to still do its job properly as best as it can. So, all right. Yeah. Th thank you for yeah, reaching out to us again. That was, it was thank nice to us. Yeah. Nice to see you. When you texted me earlier, I was like, oh, it's Linda. <laughs> so, it's been a while since we talked, so I'm happy we could come out and um, see you. Yeah, it's, it's our pleasure. And, uh, you know, I told you last time, and I know you know this, but, you know, we're we're here to, to be there for you guys and to do our absolute best for you all the way through and to be there after. Yeah, we service everything you put in, so it's kind of nice, too. We don't have to worry about it. So, no, thank you. Um, Linda Winwood, I know you guys, uh, last time things were, you know, we needed to do this yesterday because of, because of the situation. When would you like me, what works for you for me to reach out to you? Or I don't know if it's Linda or Mike. Or... Have everyone have the opportunity to review these and we meet again on, um, March 6th. March 6th. Okay. So, um, most likely we'll make a decision then our um personnel no, our purchasing policy requires us because of the amount of money it is to to get a couple more bids um we have reached out to people so we'll just have to see if that's happened or not even if they don't respond that's considered our you know for bid so okay Perfect. Um, well, I will, I'll make a note for March 6th. Okay. Um, and do you, everybody's hours are different. So you, would you like me to call you directly? And do you like morning or afternoon? Or do you want me to call Mike? We won't meet until Oh, you don't meet until the evening, do you? Okay. I'll, call, I'll reach out on the 7th for you. Okay. I'll text you. Okay. You did last. Or Michael can text you. Yeah. You guys did. You guys did last. Michael in charge of this project. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. If you have any other questions, please reach out in the meantime. Okay. We will. Charge you for the more cup to the wall out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you about that. Nice <laughs> 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 so, meeting all you folks. Thank you. So, so re regarding that, for what it's worth, when Peter and I sat down in here and I looked at that and saw 2% because it didn't, for whatever reason, connect. I looked at, I whispered to him, I said, I'm really happy that they know who I am because this is <laughs> my luck. So. <laughs> so thank you very much, everybody. I well, hope you guys have a good Have a great evening. Yep. If thank any you. questions, reach out to one of us. We can answer for you. So hey, thank thanks you. so much. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. You too. And I'll send you all, and you can look them over in more detail. Um, 
And so have we reached out to anyone else or has no one respond? I'm nobody's responded. I've gone to a couple other different mechanical firms, but nobody's nobody has said anything. Now, I will push a little harder over the course of the next couple of days. Well, if you could just um, have like an email that you've reached out, say, to somebody and, and you know, they have, if they don't respond, then That's we'll just have it on file and... and we do that with our highway too. When we, it doesn't matter as long as you've reached out to three people, you've reached out. Yeah, I don't comprehend most of the technology, but it it, it, it seems to me, I hate to say it, the most expensive option is the, but I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just I don't have enough knowledge. To, yeah. Uh, I'm going to wait until I'm going to reserve any opinion until I see the, yeah. see the units and can look things oh, yeah. up. I understand that. Um, my initial feeling is that my understanding is that somewhere in this town's plan is a new building at some point for the highway and fire department. Uh, depending on how far out we're thinking that is would change my opinion on whether or not we spend $10,000 on ductwork. But anyway, I want to see things before mm -hmm. I. Okay, let's move on. Um, it's getting late. Um, Kurt, are you ready for a project manager's report? Yes, I am. Sorry, um, for, sorry for the wait. No problem. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so I think everybody um, has a, a handout on insurance. Um, 99% of my time um, has been focused on all of the various insurance projects. Um, but I did want to give everybody an update of uh, where we stand with um, both VLCT and Federal Highway. Um, so the gears with VLCT are, are moving. Um, we did get a first settlement um, which covered uh, road salt and all of the vehicle repairs that were damaged in the flood. Um, that included the garage trucks as well as the fire department. And so we received $10,493 um, on those two claims. Uh, nothing was denied on those two claims. Um, we now have a second uh, round uh, and a check should be coming in um, this week or at the latest on Monday. Um, and that's going to be for $177,652. Um, VLCT, uh, we kind of rearranged our claims so they fit their buckets. So they did put them into, um, categories, building contents, portable equipment, and data processing. Um, and I do have a spreadsheet, if anybody's interested, how that interprets to um, our claim sheet. Um, so we should be expecting that money um, any time now. Uh, they gave me a, a, a particular date um, to send it, send it. I don't remember it exactly, but um, we should expect it this week or Monday. Um, these numbers here... Um, include the $50,000 advance that we got. Um, so that money was deducted off the claim. And there were a couple of items that were denied. Um, one was the septic cleaning for $1,397 and mold expect, uh, inspection for $500. And there was one tax item that slipped through uh, for $3 and they deducted that. Um, so the combination total settlement to date is $188,145. Um, and that does not include the town hall. Town hall, as I mentioned, is in the flood zone um, and therefore it's subject to state allocation. So we're still waiting on that. 
Um, but I did want to let you know that the claim um, is $38,000. A um, couple of numbers that I uh, uh, wanted to uh, indicate have been moved over to FEMA. So um, everything, um, including the um, recreation equipment for $51,000, has all been moved over to FEMA. So we've, we've moved $54,035 over to FEMA, um, which includes the $1,000 deductible from VLCT. Um, and I have been talking to Gabriel on a daily basis, and um, I can assure you that all of these are in the FEMA system at this point in time. Um, so if we add back the $50,000 um, uh, uh, advance, then our total claim is 276,328. Um, so the good news is the VLCT has really done a hundred percent, um, settlement, um, with just those few exceptions, the rec field and the ball field are really the big one. And, um, uh, FEMA is, uh, working pretty hard on that, looking for a lot of detail on that listing. Uh, we've tried to move that up with FEMA. Um, so if we can see if we can get it into one of the early projects so we can see some money off of that um, in, the, in the nearer future in FEMA time. Uh, so that could be as much as a year from now. As far as Federal Highway goes, um, we did get a fully executed grant for the work done on North Wolcott Road at Four Wheel Drive. Um, so that is for 40,458. Um, so we should be looking for that. I don't know what the time frame is, but it is a fully executed um, grant. Um, we have a second grant that has been uh, signed by both parties and uh, we expect it to be fully executed in the very near future. Um, and that's for the Elmore Pond Bridge um, reconstruction. And that's for 28,917. And then we have a third claim for North Wolcott Road um, up around the, the North Wolcott Village line. Uh, this work was done in September and October. Um, the approval status for this is unknown right now. Um, Lucian had worked with Federal Highway um, when they came out and inspected the area. And I think that uh, there sounds like there may have been a verbal at that point, but we don't have any confirmation. Um, so this is one we're gonna watch. I saw that uh, uh, Lucian was on earlier did you expect them on uh, the Zoom call? I wasn't, but we've both been trying to reach you, but your phone doesn't work. No, um, I know. Um, your, your phone doesn't work either. No, my phone doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no phones so, are working. <laughs> yeah, he he wanted, to, so I emailed you what he said, because he's. we've yeah. been talking on my cell phone. Yeah. Um, so what is, what do you think is the best way forward with this? Should we get in touch with, um, I forget her name, Patricia, was it? Deborah. Deborah, right. Deborah Pierce. Yeah, right. I have her phone number. And also, um, so the, just so you know this right now, um, so Edie sent out this, federal aid highway thing spreadsheet but I, I told her that the Jim parody and the trucking and the culvert are not part of the um, flood damage that all okay. has to come off and, she, uh, and I talked to her yesterday and she's taking it off she needs to send you a new list just so okay. you know okay so that was marked as federal highway but so it needs to come off. Yeah, that's uh, not the it was coded wrong. And that's just that culvert was done in anticipation of paving. Right. 
Okay, so is that a FEMA claim then? No, no. Okay, all yes. right. Um, so yeah, all of the work on these projects has been done by uh, Manash and Blow and Cody and not parody. Yeah. So uh, that's general. That's the general update. Um, the, the gears are moving um, and some payments are coming through. Um, as far as FEMA is concerned, um, they have we, we really have a very good um, agent right now. And um, things are definitely moving forward. A lot of questions are coming out, a lot of detail. Um, and so I'm probably going to be bugging uh, the town office pretty often uh, with, with bits of information. Uh, FEMA really gets down into the weeds. Um, so we're just going to expect it. It's been going very, very smooth so far. So well, that's what I got. That's what I got. So Kurt, my question is with fire department, the $134,803.12, does yep. that go to the fire department or does that stay in the town? Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped over that part. <laughs> I apologize for that. Yeah, so this is, um, uh, once I've uh, reconciled uh, the settlement back to what we had, uh, the claim that we made, uh, what it comes out to is the fire department uh, is 134803 and that is their claim. So that includes everything that they claimed. Um, I think that these should be reconciled against their invoices. Um, and then, you know, whatever the board thinks, but it is the, it is the fire department money. Um, the highway came out to 80,404. One thing to mention about the highway is that there was quite a number of items on the claim sheet that um, the guys have not purchased yet. So there would be no invoice to go against it, but there is a claim sheet. So you can see um, I've marked them all as pending if they haven't bought it and complete if they have bought it. Um, and then the rest of the money goes to the town. And all of that should be pretty easily reconciled because um, that was all of the contract work that went out into the buildings and has been completed. It's 100% complete there. But yeah, thanks well, for the question. Um, but it really is up to uh, the board as to how to allocate all this out, how to distribute money. So I'm hoping that you will send Edie that summary you said, because I'm working with her to make sure that everything she's coded matches everything we're claiming. And then as the money comes in, we're, uh, we're marking that so we know what we got paid for and what we don't get paid for. Right. Right. Still outstanding. But she would need that list. Okay, I have that, um, and I'll send it to her tonight. Um, and Belinda, one more uh, comment is, in our first settlement from VLCT, um, there was $700 for the fire truck. Um, I did. Was that money transferred to the fire department? It yep, was. We gave it to them with their appropriation. Okay. Um, so when you look at this 180, uh, well, uh, 134,803, that includes the 700. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So you want to remove 700 from that number. Got it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Move on to the select board review and action. The, uh, Clint Wines reached out to me, um, getting nervous about the fact that spring ball will be starting up soon um, in April, the end of April, he'd like to get going on this. And if he has to order things, it takes a while. He was asking about money 
and because it's with FEMA, and it is on, as Kurt said, it is on the FEMA damage report. Uh, I suggested that um, he give me a list of what he really needed to play ball, which I've emailed you all, comes to about 20,000, um, to get permission to be able to order that now. Now these these FEMA claims are they like all the other FEMA claims where we've got to lay the money out and be reimbursed for it? Yeah. So do you feel good about this, Kurt? That FEMA will. Yes, I, I feel I feel good that they're going to process it. Yes, um, there are some details that. Um, you know, they've been asking about primarily it was the uh, cost of um, I, I believe it's a uh, a trailer shell um, and so I reached out and did get that but that was the big sticking point with them um, so I think it's been resolved okay it would be nicer in my I, I know that uh, there was some talk about using a uh, one of the town and town and country sheds instead of the uh, shipping container um, because I think that FEMA doesn't really care um, as long as you know we're trying to replace in kind. It would just look a whole lot better. They want to. Yeah, I think they need to ask us. I don't want to see a shipping container on the ball field. Yeah. <laughs> Is yeah. that within the, are we still in the historic district there? <laughs> <I think so. laughs> Whatever, they need a permit. And I'm not sure they can even get a permit to put anything on there. I can not tell you the truth. Yeah. Um, Tom shouldn't give them if it's if it's under 150 square feet, but if it's over, I don't believe they could get a permit for one. Okay. I agree with I don't really like a shipping. You container. can't put it across the road on the properties we're buying either, right? Yeah. You got a chance to look at the list. Do you want to see this? No, I didn't. Uh, mainly, it's like the backstop and it's material for seed and and this and is the stuff where they need the money up. They need the money. They want permission to order it, and the town will pay pay for it, and then uh, when FEMA reimburses us, it'll go and oh, yeah, that's that's fine. They're gonna need it, so they. If you don't look at this. You just saw it already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's all. That's the final name. It's... So, could I just, if, if we're all in agreement, could I have a motion to um, approve allowing the Athletic Association to purchase? Um, items that they feel are uh, necessary to begin ball i'll make that ball i'll make that motion second all those in favor Aye. Aye. opposed so carried could you just put in the minutes that it's, it's roughly twenty thousand eight hundred and twelve dollars i'm sure you know it might change a little bit just so um, it's this list. He's not buying a shed. So just uh, just a point. Um, if we buy this equipment, we're going to need to submit the invoices to FEMA right away. Um, well, the so. invoices should go through the town anyway because we're going to be paying. So we'll have them. Okay, gotcha. Um, I'll let him know that. 
Okay, certificate of approval, renewal for the salvage yard, for Betta Salvage Yard. Um, this was sent to you too. It is a formality. I mean, Betta's auto, Morrisville used auto has been there for years. Every five years, they need to just renew this permit with the state. Um, There's almost nothing left. You know, she's crushed most of them and stuff, but because it is by the river, she has to have one. You know, they've done a massive cleanup over the years there, haven't they? I hadn't seen until the flood came and took the mess down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, now I see the beautiful roof line of what looks right. like a Rambler station wagon. Right. <laughs> I'd love to go walking in there. Yeah. So you need a motion to approve that? Yeah. I'd like to be the one to make that motion. Okay. I'll second the motion on that. I have a first and a second to approve the certificate of approval for location of a salvage, salvage yard, forceful used auto. All those in favor? All right. Post so carried. Then we have town meeting preparation. Linda, do we need any? So the only thing I wanted to let you know is so far I haven't found anybody to do the kitchen. So if you guys have any ideas, please let me know. Justice for Dogs doesn't think they can do it, so. Girl Scouts are going to be selling cookies, so they will be cookies. Um, I don't know. Athletic Association is concentrating elsewhere. We put it that way. <laughs> they what have... about the women's auxiliary? So I did the fire department? Yes. Okay. I'll reach out to Natalie then. I yeah. didn't even think of them. Um, the Girl Scouts are going to do the... Oh, thank you. The um, Pledge of Allegiance, and um, so we have that. Uh, Joe will be the moderator. Um, I don't think we, you know, you guys could come up with some announcements for him and stuff, but um, I have been, the force committee wants to be out in the lobby. As well as well, the wastewater does. Wastewater, sorry. Yeah. So the forest will be inside. Um, Bruce Wheeler has also asked for a table for his, um, Broadband, mm -hmm. uh, the fire department will be there. I don't know what yeah. else you guys would want. Um, that, that'll take up a lot of room. How yeah. uh, much more room? Um, Dolan yeah. last time. Dolan has, has agreed to um, video so people can go on and watch. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, because also we do have the presidential primary going on, the town vote for officers and also the school vote. So we will be there, but I will need my select board to come later. Please. Oh, folks. Oh, folks. Seven o'clock. So why don't you reach out to the athletic associate? I mean, the Auxiliary yep. real soon. Otherwise, I'm thinking people will not be happy if there's nothing. Food, yeah. And um, even if there's, I don't know. You're talking about the lunch room? Yeah. Uh, right. I was thinking, you know, I could even, we could do, I could do, if nobody does it, I could do chili, we could do hot dogs or something, but we have to have a volunteer. Thought about asking Diane Earl, but I'm not sure, but I will go to the auxiliary first. And then sodas, that's all, or waters. That's all I can do. Yeah, we can be, yeah. we'll get somebody. Okay. I'm, I was a little worried after I was told, uh, I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah, and there's other ways you be creative. I mean, yeah, you can you ask people to make bread, you know, sure. breads and stuff. At least so there's something there with some coffee. I figured we got the cookies covered with Girl Scouts. If people it will say really in the most box cookies. Oh. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> I can't the Costco and get muffins. We gotta go get your heart who's on bakery donuts. Find Something. down whoever's got the recipe, and make them make them. You know how you know, actually, Hardwick makes donuts now too. I was amazed when I found out. And those are good. 
Who is? I'd rather eat a piece of pizza for breakfast than a cookie. <laughs> Kano lost dose. Why not both? <laughs> Maybe we should have catered. I'm kidding. <laughs> No, Alan, uh, Alan's a friend of mine. I'll see if I can get Kusan to make a couple hundred donuts. <laughs> Good. Want that recipe. Right now. Want the damn recipe. Them. I think we'll have to kill him to get it out of him. <laughs> we could always yeah. get donuts for the old popcorn. <laughs> Nothing personal, but Try the common good. Oh, He's okay. worth more to me alive. He makes the donuts for so, me. I don't have to okay. cook. Super, what was his grandmother? I think it was his mother. Uh -huh. really they were that big. Mm -hmm. And it was so little. Oh. <laughs> and they went good with a bowl of maple syrup, too. Mm -hmm. All right, back to work here. <laughs> okay, so just let us know, Belinda. Um, so. yeah. Yes, I will reach out tomorrow to Natalie well, and, and let you know. Should have asked. What's your name? Get Let's, uh, v so VLTC has recommended um, to the town, I sent that to you, too. Um, that we should move all our ARPA funds out of any special accounts and put them in the general fund. Sometimes did that right away, right away. Um, as you can read, um, they're afraid that uh, the US Treasury will start clawing this money back that we haven't spent. Well, we better do it immediately then. Yes. And so I every uh, March, by the end of March is the deadline. Then I, in April, I have to um, tell them where we spend our money every year. So it'd be good if we could uh, make a motion to, if you agree, to obligate all our ARPA funds and, and that haven't been spent and put it into the general fund. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second. Do we have any other comments about that? I just want to let you know that there's a certain amount in a CD, and when it comes due, it will go into the general fund since you made that motion. It should be in May. But officially, no matter where it's sitting right. today, yeah. all of the ARPA funds that haven't been spent whether they've been obligated or committed or they're sitting there are now going to be moved to the general fund. Right. Do we know when the committed funds will be going? Well, we're going to go one thing at a time. So oh. we have a motion on the floor. Sorry. Um, any other comment? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Um, I, is he still alive? <laughs> Dolan, we're worried about you. Dolan. Yeah, I'm alive. I'm listening. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to multitask, though. Yeah, we know that. Check in your eyelids. <laughs> Wink twice if you're not under duress. So I'm. I would like to make a recommendation if that tonight we don't. Um, decide where the designation of the ARPA money and the Brook Road project money goes um, like the second week in March. And I'm saying that because uh, working with Edie and stuff, you know, I'd, I'd like to get real figures mm -hmm. on what we spent and what we have committed to present to the board, you know, right now it's a guesstimate and um, that way we'll have real figures and then we can have the opportunity to um, reserve some of those funds in, in the fund balance um, moving forward. You know, we have the generator coming up, we have the air exchange, and then we have a bunch of committed stuff in there. We have to think about how we're going to pay for that um, 2000, well, 16 truck. 
we said that they could repair it for 20,000. Well, that's easy to say, but we need to know where, where the money's coming from. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to put all that stuff together and then, you know, the second meeting in March, go through and designate where we think we should designate things, if that's acceptable. Also, just a cautionary note, you know, we do have town meeting coming up. I'm not saying our bu the budget will be voted right. down, but there's, I, I thought of that when I meant, also, I meant to say it. Yeah. You could cut it from the floor, so, you know, right. we always have to consider that, especially with the school vote, too. Right. I don't think, I don't think there's any rush. Um, We've made a motion, it's safe now. It's committed to the general fund right now. You know, that's where it is. And that's how I'll report it. Yep. I think it's very fortuitous that we're able to use our funds for right. fill a hole in budget this year. But I, I hope it gives the public a forewarning of what we're gonna next year we really have the belt tighten and not you know, do we, so you think about it, do we want to put some of that money in the equipment fund to lower that burden in the tax, you know, in the budget next year? Um, I'll try to put something together for the next meeting and then you still can hash on it and think of. Yeah. Well, one thing you've mentioned before is having some pot of money that we can use for all these grant opportunities that come up. Right. I don't know how, being that I'm still just a puppy, I don't know how those things have been matched before now, but. We have a lot of grants. Sir. Because no one in row grants. Yeah. Oh, I see. Now we, we have, uh, yeah. <laughs> we have uh, capital funds set up for highway and school, don't we? I for anything. Um, yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. We, yeah, and we should really continue to put some money in that. I actually yeah. was asking Edie today. We have three hundred thousand in there. Um, Fifteen thousand we've spent um, from our portion on the school bridge, uh, the school street bridge. All the engineering and stuff. But I didn't know if you knew that that bridge was going to be a hundred percent paid for. I remember. Yeah. in a meeting except for the engineering and right of ways and stuff we only have to pay five percent and we i don't remember if we discussed a, a sidewalk or not yeah it's a yeah. sidewalk yeah it's the if i recall it's the arched one that we decided to go with i i think it is important for the like to at least have some understanding of that we're really trying to hold the line, yeah. access the best we can. It's uh, well, it's hard because the limit's gone up. Everything's gone up. Yeah, uh, I'll go across to Canada next year. I don't think there's anything frivolous in our budget. Oh no, there is. Okay, if that's a, if that's all right with you guys, to just wait a couple a month to yep. figure out where it goes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't see any difference in response. <laughs> any emotions? Yeah. Okay. We're going to move on to the MOU between the school district and the town about the wastewater, about having the wastewater situated up at the elementary school playground. This has gone through many different um, changes between the school director's attorney and our attorney back and forth and back and forth. Um, and this is what they've all both agreed was in, in the best interest for both of us. Um, and it's all going to be um, 
contingent on whether the voters approve allowing the wastewater to be at the school and even if there's going to be wastewater. But um, it's part of the process of getting a long time coming yes, to get an agreement here between the parties. Um, so I was asked to have our attorney review it. He has reviewed it. Their attorneys agreed with everything. So I'm bringing it to you now um, for permission to sign it. That's what uh, they're waiting for. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second. All right. Did you have any questions on this? If the voters say not at the school, is there a backup? No, it's dead. <clears throat> Only the main reason is because of ARPA funding. You know, most of that money is ARPA funding. It has to be spent by 26, I believe. Um, there isn't enough time. And I don't think the voters would want to take on that kind of financial burden. The one chance if they want paid for up front is to go for it now. Okay, so I have a motion and a second on the floor to allow the town to sign the memorandum and understanding between the town of Walker and the town of Town School District. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. I didn't do anything on the class four road policy. I thought about it, but I never did anything. <laughs> I looked in the obvious places, oh. but didn't see anything oh. pointed. So we'll have to kick it down the road again. Um, it just seems like too many other things pull out. You know, they... It's not a high priority, especially in the winter. All right, generator update. Michael was working on that again, too. Yes, so there are... Two important pages in this stack of paperwork that Belinda was so kind to create for us. Um, I've reached out to three different people, or three different companies. Uh, the third, third company, All Wired Up, I, allegedly is the one that installed our original generator. He's eager to put a price together, but he couldn't get it ready for tonight. Um, so what we have before us now is a lot of paperwork from Brookfield Service. They our service contract on our current generator. Um, and it looks like they're talking about replacing our current Generac with a Kohler of the same size. Um, and their cost is 10,000. Um, it covers some things. It doesn't cover other things. It's all laid out for you in this paperwork. And then, uh, Mark Alexander from Wayne's Electric, the last page in this type of paperwork, you'll find another one. Um, with a little less detail and a $19,000 estimate. Um, this doesn't spec out what generator exactly he would use. Um, speaking with him in person, he said that he would recommend a Kohler um, because they, the warranty and service from Generac has gone downhill as far nice. as... Um, you know, or TV advertising. Yeah. Their service is gone. That's not good. Apparent, according to the people that work on them, Generac is not, uh, their parts and availability is not what it used to be. So everyone has moved to Kohler. Um, but other than that, everything else is exactly identical. Um, and like I said, I, I don't have that third. Kohler is a very well established in this field, right? Yes. What do you mean exactly identical? What's exactly identical? Not the two bins. 
No, uh, just the same, the, the Kohler and the, the Generac, same the same, yeah. Yep. So my question to you, and I, and I apologize, but I thought about it after, was, um, did, does anyone think we need to replace it, really? I need to be convinced. I looked to Brookfield to yeah. get them to offer an opinion on that, and they flat out refused. They wouldn't offer an opinion on whether or not we needed a new one. They would offer, um, uh, you know, an estimate to replace it. So how much? I mean, how disastrous was it when we had this last failure with it? Was it? It must have delayed. Well, we have a problem. I know we have a problem. We have the bill here for eighteen hundred dollars for a um, replace the controller and oil pressure sensor on the generator. But they did have the parts, I assume. Well, we haven't signed it. We what? We haven't signed it. Oh, so want to do it? No. But it it's still it's still working. Still comes on in. Yeah, it's still working. Today, they didn't do that in the spring anyway, weren't they? Yes. No one's ever. This is dated December twentieth that they received the estimate. But um, I don't know. It's just like I want. Uh, someone said that we needed a new one. I I wanted some a professional to tell me. How long do they run it though? Every Wednesday. It starts on its own, runs for at least a minute to two minutes, and then it stops. The reason I was concerned was one of the days we had a storm in December. Uh, the December storm, uh, I went, I came, there was no electricity. And so I went out to the generator, Bob showed up. So I'm there trying getting inside and opening it up and everything. And I'm like, Bob, can you come over and help me? We need to get this started. We couldn't start it. So, and I'm like, Bob, you're a handyman. Figure this out. And he's like, I don't do generators. <laughs> you're the generator girl. And I'm like, oh, it's a little different. Well, anyhow, so we called Brookside who came up and it cost us $300 or something to get it fixed. And that's when they gave us the quote that if we did this, we wouldn't have this problem. But we haven't had the problem since. We have not had the problem since they came. Absolutely. It sounds like the controllers probably. That it's end of it's a low band. oil or something. It, it had something to do with, it wasn't getting enough. There's the controller and oil pressure sensor. Yep. The controller has been running for how many years, continuously right. sleep wearing out. And just I found out it is, it is about 10 years old. Yep. Is that what it is? God sakes, I don't. I guess I guess I kind of agree with Linda that we can wait on this. I somebody will take me out and hang me for that the next time there's an emergency, but it's you also had this repair done and a controller, yeah, those things wear out. And uh, well we haven't had any real repairs done, but what I'm it's also the you fact know, I was really really surprised and pleased at the price. Um, on this one, yeah. I'm ten thousand. It was like, whoa. Yeah, I'm kind of blown away by that myself. I uh, that one cost thirty five hundred out there a long time ago. Somebody wrote a grant for it. Um yeah, so you just told me ten years ago. Yeah. Um I I may have been a little bit more in favor when the clock was ticking on our ARPA funds. But being that we've just protected those, and um, I mean, while the price is reasonable, yeah, I'm also not a huge fan of spending frivolously. And they will come in the spring and gotta, service it because we have a service contract. And we got the ventilation system for the garage, so thank God. Also, the school is putting in a generator. Uh, what is it, a $40,000 generator where we just gave them 15 in ARPA funds and that they just got their Act 250. So now they'll be um, building this this spring, I guess, summer. Yeah. Well, that Google says, well, this is a Kohler. I, I should have Googled the generic, but it said that uh, 
coal or with proper maintenance, a coal or generator can last you 25 to 40 years. Oh. How about a Honda? I have a Honda. That's good to know. Mine's at least 10 years old. <laughs> I think the trouble is, is like, is getting the parts for the controllers and stuff. Cause after 10 years, the game, it's like, if you can't get the controllers and it's not compatible, then you're done. What about eBay? <laughs> How much? Well, that, no, I have uh, eighteen hundred was the repair bill. Um, I spare controller. I mean, I, I you know, what the hell? not too far away. I will say they came right away. I mean, and how does I mean? Because we are this building is is designated as the emergency shelter. You know, what kind of ramifications? Are there if there isn't power at our emergency shelter? I mean, is there any? Is there any well, you know, to us from that in the short term? So. The only thing, I mean, the electricity came on eventually, you know, but the, your town garage doesn't have anything. I don't even think they have a generator to hook themselves up. I don't think so. But do they need one? Well, I don't they can manually open the doors. They shouldn't. Oh. I mean, and, and what's our longest power outage? Have we, at this location, have we three now, days. how long? Were three days. I was three days. I was only ever two. It also depends Here. on the temperature, too. I say, it, it certainly damn does. Yeah, and that was like Jesus. one of those. Like, you don't want to run the one the in for heating freeze and then break and then be in trouble. I was going to say, building. my... My memory, I've only, I've only ever been about 18 hours where we are on Sand Hill. I, uh, of course, I haven't been around. Because we're thinking of putting in a, a backup. What was yeah, the last just one just did earlier this year? Just like little days there. We got cold this winter. I think I had to. <laughs> few that we've had since we've lived up there 15 years now. A few of those were absolutely miserable. It's all the side around the emergency seem to be coming when... more frequent. <laughs> I'll just say that the emergencies are becoming more frequent. Yep. And if I can uh, jump in real quickly, the yeah. generator for uh, the garage um, was one of the um, the items that BLCT covered. So they are they do have a, a generator on their claim. And they were paid for it. So. But the fire department. Fire department has one also. Um, yeah, Dylan said they just didn't have one now. So. Well, so it sounds like um, we're kind of in favor of just holding off for now. But I'm glad to say we've we get the safeguard. We get the repair for the spring, at least authorized, and then we can review it later. Press the new one later. Should we bother? So the question is: Should we bother fixing it for eighteen hundred dollars? If we might buy one in a few months, or is are you feeling like? We might not buy one for a year or so, and we should fix it. We need we need to fix it. We could fix it, and then next year, why don't you're out? If I if I get to have a horse in the race, um, <laughs> uh, I would I would like to hold off just one more meeting and give Arthur a chance to put something together for us. Oh, all right. Way there, we have the third one, and I mean the generator's working. It tested. We're not in any immediate, and I don't even want to say it out loud because I'm not near a block of wood, but we're not in any immediate danger of not having power. Um, let's hold off, see what that third quote comes from that. Um, and then, you know, if I can... But did he buy the generator or did he just wire it? My understanding was that he installed it. I'm not sure. That's, I had a 15 minute phone conversation with him. So can I just muddy the waters here again? <laughs> we just to put something in the back of your mind. Doesn't have to be in the minutes. Um, 
So the schoolhouse restoration committee, I don't have it with me, is looking at a plan and, you know, that restoration is, is down the road a bit. But um, one of the things we're concerned about was parking and the architects have designed a way of parking, <clears throat> making parking in this built this lot here, so you park against the building more, not against the fence, and you drive up along the fence and go up to the schoolhouse and then a parking area up in the back of the fence up there, but the generator is in the way. So it would have to be moved along with that building. And it would be just in this little cubby thing, this little thing that comes out and back of the fence and the, where the gas tank is. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. If we were to- Is it on cement? Um, is it on cement? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't remember if it was. I know we got bought, that's a cable cage. They build that thing now, couldn't they? That yeah. cement thing? Yeah. Yeah, that is. Bob could build it, I think. Yeah, that is easily a hand yes. man or town crew. Right. Or, I mean, not that I want to. I could do it. But... <laughs> Forty bags of sacri. Yeah. Um, I've mixed them before. <laughs> yeah, and and again, I just <laughs> until somebody can tell me that that generator is past its half life, I I I don't see a reason to. I'm hoping that for emergency shelter, we will actually get the school since they get their generator to let us, yeah. you know, document it that it is an emergency shelter. Let's be honest, this gets flooded. Not this, but you know, I mean, around here. We have our, remember, we have our incident command here too. That um, is true. That means you have to come to work. <laughs> I know. I can do it. <laughs> Nobody came. I was here. <laughs> Somebody came by. Oh, Ryan came by and checked on me. He's like, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, that's all I have. Unless anyone else has anything. No. So I offer a motion. Yeah, just uh, see you at, at town meeting. Um, Come with positive attitudes. It's effective. Okay. <laughs> I make the motion that we adjourn our select board meeting this evening. I will happily second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> are we on set? Are we still? Are we still on? Wait a minute. Bye, Dolan. Bye. Um, I you can leave the computer on. I will take care of everything remotely.